Hi everyone, my name's Lauren and I run a small shark research and conservation organisation called Saltwater Life here in Scotland in the UK. At the moment I'm primarily focused at looking at local species that we have off our coastline. Now there's a few different ways to actually do that. Um, I do go into the water quite a lot to dive and I would love to do that all the time. However, there's a few practical implications, not least some of the storm swells that hit um, our shores, so you can't always go in and dive. But what you can do is look for evidence of these animals along our coastline. And one way to do that is to actually look at egg cases that might have washed up. So sharks, as you may know, reproduce in a few different ways. So some give birth to live young, whereas others actually lay egg cases. And it's these which are really key and give a great insight as to what species are found off our shoreline. So I'm looking at um, cat sharks, uh, small spotted cat sharks primarily, and also different species of skate. Now when I say skate, I don't just mean the common skate, well, not so common, but we'll come to that, um, but also other species of skate off our shores. Now sometimes these are actually referred to as rays, however all skates lay egg cases. That's one of the main difference between skates and rays. First up then we have this one and this is an egg case from a common skate also known as a flapper skate or sometimes known as the barn door skate because it is so huge. The name common skate is not ideal at all um, because this animal is certainly no longer common. It is in fact critically endangered. So uh, the more that we can potentially find out about this skate, um, the more the better basically. The more information the better and if we can monitor where these egg cases are actually washing up around our coastline then maybe it will give us some indication um, about where the species are inhabiting and also um, on potentially on population numbers as well. The Shark Trust run a fantastic campaign and I cannot mention egg cases without mentioning the Great Egg Case Hunt uh, run by the Shark Trust and on there all around the UK and worldwide you can log egg case finds so I do encourage you to go and check out the Shark Trust egg case hunt um, not just common skates but all species of egg case they want to know where they're found where they're washed up but also if you actually spot them diving as well they would want to take all uh, the locations in there so you can log those online um, with the Shark Trust so yeah so we have the common skate then and now we've got also, by size comparison, uh, this is the spotted skate here. And I should mention, when I say size comparison, these are not full size because they're completely dried out. So if we were to rehydrate them, or if you find them just after they've washed up out of the water, they are much, much bigger than this. I mean, here, you know, the flapper skate almost looks as big as my head. When it comes out of the water, it is pretty much the same size as my head. It's absolutely enormous. Um, so yeah, we've got the spotted skate as well as an example and here we have the little cat shark egg case as well. This is from the small spotted cat shark. So these in particular you may have found washed up on a beach, um, potentially seen them diving, but also quite often you might have seen these in aquariums. So they're very, very popular species. They're very easy to maintain in captivity. Um, they spend most of their time um, chilling out on the bottom. So quite often you find cat sharks in public aquaria. And so you may well have seen some of these egg cases um, on display there as well. So I should just mention actually, I'm not sure if I said, but the skates lay their egg cases um, on either the sand or on gravelly areas. Sometimes um, the common skates sort of nestle them between uh, larger rocks or boulders so they're fairly protected uh, whereas the cat shark tend to find something to wrap their egg cases around so from kelp fronds different species of seaweed and you can't quite see them on this they're a little bit shortened but they usually have really very long 
tendrils so this is at the the top and the bottom of the egg case these tendrils extend out the way and they use those to wrap around the kelp and really um, to secure them to that as like a an anchor really so they don't go away anywhere in the swells and also um, these are all empty egg cases so everything that well usually everything that we find washed up um, is usually because it's hatched out or you know potentially it's been predated upon or something but usually the egg cases on the beach are completely empty um, so it's those ones that we're actually ca um, collecting and in the majority of cases hopefully the egg cases are empty because the little embryos inside have used up all of the yolk supplies and they're fully developed and then they've hatched out of their egg cases. So in terms of time scales, for the small spotted cat shark in our waters, it takes about nine months um, for these to actually develop and to hatch out. The same species in the Mediterranean takes about six months. So it does give you an idea about how temperature um, the, the seawater temperature really influences um, development of, of um, sharks as well. Okay, so for some time then, I have been cataloguing uh, egg cases found around our coastline, in particular um, some spots up in the very north coast of Scotland, and as long as you're paying attention, you can usually spot them. However, um, it can be really tricky, especially when you've got a bunch of dried out seaweed. Yes, you can imagine it is quite tricky sometimes to be able to see um, these when they're in amongst the seaweed. Now, when I was going out and about doing these um, surveys, I pretty much always had my uh, dog with me. And as we were going along and doing these surveys, I began to wonder, could my dog actually help me could she could she go along and could she find egg cases on the beach and potentially ones that either i was going to miss because they were tangled into seaweed or underneath seaweed or partially covered in sand um would she be able to um, detect them for me so a lot of um, work is being done at the moment with uh, conservation dogs, uh, and conservation detection dogs, and what they're able to do is actually is absolutely incredible. So there's a lot of work and they're able to find great crested newts, for example, in ponds. Um, they, they detect um, different scaths so they can uh, give an idea of different populations um, of different species in environments and they really do contribute enormously um, to conservation efforts by being able to search these areas uh, much more effectively um, than humans can. So at this point I think uh, I should introduce my dog. So Tati is a working cocker spaniel, that's her, that's her breed. I've gone Tati. And you can see, there we go, she has got fantastic she's got a funky little hairdo and she has got um better highlights than i have she's obsessed with something over here which is the tennis ball so the tennis ball is her most favorite thing in the whole wide world it is better than me it is better than food it is better than anything so she loves the tennis ball as you can see and that is her reward so whenever we go looking for egg cases and whenever i've been doing any training then it's the tennis ball that is the reward for her and we've been working together for a little over a year now um, going along our survey beaches and she runs off lead and goes up on the high tide line um, or covers huge stretches of the beach uh, mostly you do find the egg cases up, up and around the high tide line or if there's a predominant wind, you tend to find them actually sort of funneled into one um, section of the beach sometimes. So she's brilliant at being able to explore um, these areas really efficiently and effectively. Um, and she goes up and down um, the, the beach sections and will check out what actually, um, if there is any egg cases there. Um, uh, <laughs> So she's, she's ex excellent at this and I've got a few clips to actually show you of her in action 
Um, what we do is when we go along, because I want her to actually show me where the egg cases are located, I don't want her to um, destroy the egg cases, certainly not that, and I don't want her to um, carry, the, carry the egg cases off like really far away from where she actually found them so what we do is a passive she does a passive indication for me which basically means she'll run up and down the survey area and when she's found an egg case she will sit down next to it been working on these trials for a little over a year now and hopefully we've got enough data to put together a preliminary study uh, really soon. So um, on behalf of myself and Tatty, uh, are you going to come up Tatty? Are you going to come up? Then thank you very much for listening um, and I do hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers, see you later. So I've got a few examples here um, to have a look at and we've got this one now this is quite a big egg case this is from the we've already got a cameo i haven't even started talking about i haven't even introduced my dog yet um this is tatty and she's interested because i've picked up the egg case and now she's she thinks she's got a job to do bless her um it's okay not your time yet <laughs> so first up then we've got this one 